Jerky kind of looks good, actually. Yeah. Sure. And then, um, like, he's a little confused, but sure. I don't know. I don't okay. Know why he does that. Yeah. I don't think he'll do it here because it's a different environment. Sure. That's why we kind of stopped using the e collar the first round of training. Okay. Okay. But I think it may be because I knew it was Mm -hmm. Because he is really receptive when we're Sure. Ready. Yeah, yeah. I think here is a different environment than at home yeah. where he's more comfortable and he knows the place very well. Here he'll always associate with a little structure, just like Gunner did. So some dogs we do see a little bit of frustration when they feel the e collar. So we can assess a couple things today about our timing, seeing if we're marking at the correct time and if our levels are appropriate. Moving forward, if you are going to do a session with him, I wouldn't shy away from correcting him or avoiding him to avoid conflict. He's got to kind of get through a little bit of a rocky patch with you. But to make it more safe, I'd pop the muzzle on him and be able to feel fully confident yeah. that you like can work through. If he has a tantrum, you're like, at least I know that he cannot bite me. Right. Um, and helping him work through that a little bit more. I'll just go over a little bit of what we went over last week um, now that both of you are here and see if we're seeing any of that hesitation you're seeing or that stiff body language, see how we can work them through it. It was only in the bed, it was the bed. Okay. I didn't really work that, but you know, I yeah. don't, I can only walk around the house so many rounds. Yes, yeah, yeah. The bed stays like in this stage, well, like it's important to do some reps of them and get it like kind of note that he's doing it comfortably and able to get on and off. But really the training becomes more of background, like you're living with the training as opposed to you have to carve out 10 to 15 minutes every single day to get him to go on and off the bed 16 times. That's not very realistic. So we look just like we did with Gunner, like starting to leave him on a little bit longer and making sure in that time frame um, we're starting with maybe 10 minutes and setting your timer so you're really focused in that 10 minutes. Um, I wouldn't pair it with doing anything else, just maybe sit and relax and watching TV. So we'll start with a little bit of the walk. So anytime he goes to get out of my space, I'm just gonna start marking with no and giving him a correction. I haven't really had Good. 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 So. Anticipate he'll do it over here. Good. So I'm walking by you a couple times. If he goes to dart toward you, I'm marking with no and give him a correction. And that correction is coming because he's out of my bubble. And I wanna see if we can walk by you a couple more times without him. No. Good. Good job. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Come here, bud. How does the tap and turn feel? Good. Good. Like, feels so yeah. Like no yeah. Outside, I'd consider going a little bit higher because his sensation in here is gonna, we can get away with those lower levels, but outside, he's just not feeling it. And the purpose of the correction is we want to make sure it's motivating enough for him to change or alter his behavior once he has a good understanding of what we're asking him to do, which we can check that box and say, don't pull us. So anytime he goes to give you a pull, I just maybe consider going up a little bit higher than you've been going, get gauge the reaction, and then you can always come back down after he feels one or two more firm corrections. Tap and turn um, is like what you were doing here as I'm walking, I'm gonna turn, and if he doesn't turn with me, I'm giving him a tap on the e-collar. So my leash is nice and loose. I'm not 
100% concerned about my positioning. I'm just seeing, is he cognizant enough to turn with me, not pull me, so turning. And I'm tapping there because he kind of blew past me. It's an exercise just to test how focused they are on us in the moment. So his only job right now is to be focused on me. Yeah. I mean, his tail's like not tucked. There'll be parts of the training that like he's got to learn some lessons and I wish it could be rainbows and butterflies like, a, like it is with, like when we talked about Gunner, like sometimes those, that first two sessions, he didn't always look beautiful and pretty, but the end result is just having a dog that's a little bit more stable. I think he's had, and I don't mean this to be offensive at all, but I think he's had a lot of time to make a lot of the decisions. And that sometimes happens when you love something so much, you kind of tend to spoil them. Sit. And he's probably heard some version of no, but maybe not in the way that we're teaching it now. So he's got to get used to what no is. And when you first start to like learn the word no, you're not really happy about adjusting. But our goal with this is to teach him now so we can have a smoother time communicating with him. We don't have to get him to a point where he's questioning us. I mean, it's just like, I know you're a little concerned about him being a little fearful, but obviously we went through that with Gunnar too and he turned out very, very well toward the end. Just like we said, like disciplining a child, they're not gonna like it when you discipline them. Nobody likes discipline. It's just part of life to have a more manageable dog at home. which we can work through and help him become more confident, but we can't force him to feel happy in the crate. That will just take a little bit of time and him getting used to it, us setting down some really clear ground rules and manners for the crate. Um, so you may still hear a little bit of like the whining and the growling. I'd let all of those go as best as you can. Um, I'm sure they drive you crazy sometimes. Um, yeah, it's but, just hard because it's like, I want to like, do all these things but like when sure. I put it in there I, I would like for it to be like a peaceful time yes but it's yeah just not. yeah it's likely that like the dog he is he's just a little bit more nervous of a guy and that's not a bad thing at all he's just feeling confinement anxiety um the best way that I can help you work through this is like put him in the crate and grab a pair of like noise canceling headphones if you have to and try to just wait until he's a little bit calmer to release him because um, okay. if we're releasing him constantly when he's in this really whiny state and he's really amped up he's starting to like realize whining works so yeah. as best as I possibly can whatever that takes for me um, it, it is like very annoying my dog just went through that when she was crate training and it was like miserable the other thing that I've run into recently too is like I feel like I can get away with the bark collar like when I leave him home for like three or four hours at a time but like mm -hmm. if I'm getting into like six to seven hour territory like I one time left him in there with the bark collar on for that long and he, ha he ended up with like sores and stuff mm -hmm. so I guess like just those times I, I just won't use it but it's hard because I feel like I've done that before where it's like I'll use it most of the time during those like shorter stints yeah um but then like sometimes I won't use it if I'm going to be gone for longer and mm -hmm. then he like knows that he can get away yep from yep <laughs> yeah like I I would, for that, I would keep the bark collar on for those longer extended amounts of time so he can be kind of conditioned to realizing that barking doesn't work. And what you can do is try to be really diligent about moving where the bark collar is sitting. So if you're first putting him in, put it on the left side um, and kind of rotate it around his neck so it's not always sitting in the same spot. And I think that will help you immensely. Additionally, 
depending on the brand, there may be a metal adapter you can use that's hypoallergenic. Um, mm -hmm. You have a sport dog bark color, correct? Yeah. Okay, I can look in, just do a little research on my end, see if they make an adapter that's allergy, is good for dogs with allergies, which will be like a copper metal. Um, yeah. But if we can't find something like that, I just stay committed to rotating it around his neck. And if it sits in the same spot for six hours, I'm not too concerned about that, but maybe the next day put it on the opposite side. Okay. I just, I for a period of time, I was wondering, like, because I, I have been putting it in the same exact spot mm -hmm. because I felt like when it wasn't, like, directly on his trachea, it, like, mm -hmm. wouldn't pick up the bark. Sure. So. That's why I was sticking with the same spot, but I can go back to trying to rotate yeah. if you have calls. Yeah, try to rotate it. Make sure it's nice and snug so it can make accurate contact with the skin. Um, see how that goes for a little bit, how his barking is. I only really care about the barking in the crate and then the scratching. So if we can start to manage those two things, we can get him a little bit more used to being confined again. Okay. Um, and it, did you mention that he's also really nervous on the bed state as well? Um, I feel like we've made good progress with that. As I've started to become like more consistent with all of this again in the past couple months, um, it definitely was hard when we when I was like re-implementing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like he was just standing and whining and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, I do think that we've made progress with that. Yeah. Um, and are you gone at work? Like, do you work long periods of time? Yeah, so I'm a nurse, so I work 12-hour shifts, oh, wow. so yeah. um, three days a week. So some of the days I'll go to my parents, which, like, that's another factor that I'm sure is, plays into all this. Mm -hmm. Like, he just is, like, it's like Disneyland over there. Like, he just gets whatever he wants. Like, yeah. there's no structure whatsoever. So that's hard, and, like, I have, like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel bad asking my parents to, like, implement, like, extra stuff when sure, I'm yeah. or even, like, taking care of him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get that. During some other days, I do have, uh, I have him in the crate the whole day, and then I have a dog walker come nice. two separate times yeah, throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. So he's all set then. Like, he has, he's being let out appropriately. He's just kind of, this is like a mental thing for him. A lot of anxiety. Yeah. Because um, we know yeah. we know his needs are met. We know that he doesn't have to go to the bathroom. We know he's just, yeah. you know, having a feeling. Um, mm -hmm. So the best you can, like I know it sounds hard to crate when you're home, but start implementing a little bit of crate time. Get him used to your presence, calmness in the crate. Oh, yeah. The question was, how, like, how to handle his behavior when he's in the crate. So just basically ignore everything unless he's like full on barking or mm -hmm. pawing at the door and then yes. basically just wait it out until he like fully relaxes. Yes. Out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the best way to go about it is just picking really clear things that we can correct for. So that would be manners in the crate. Um, if he's rough in with the door, scratching the floor, anything like that, we can, or correctable things. And of course you're barking for your whining. I wouldn't be so concerned about it. Um, the one thing that can be helpful is if he's really, really in a whining fit, it's not a release out of the crate, but something my coworker had suggested is go let him out of the crate for a second and put him right back in. And sometimes that can interrupt the initial anxiety um, oh, attack that he's having. And it's not he's not going to go back in the crate and fall asleep by any means, but it can be a little bit of a pause button if you feel like the whining is getting quite intense. He's still not yeah. winning by getting to be out of the crate, but it's like yeah. an interruption at least. But I, I also like in the house, I know obedience isn't a huge, huge thing in anxiety, but I think it can definitely help to get him a little bit of separation from you in the house. So we can still cuddle with him on the couch and be affectionate because he's a very affectionate dog. But I'd say mm -hmm. maybe a couple times a day, have some separation from him. So if your yeah. normal routine is to kind of have snuggle time on the couch in the evening, maybe spend 20 to 30 minutes with him on a bed. So he's starting to relax around you without having to be on top of you. Or if you get up to go get a glass of water, that he's on the bed and not seeing, oh, what's mom doing in the kitchen? Um, so mm -hmm. we can kind of make him less of a Velcro dog. Okay. And kind of develop okay. that independence. Okay. And then, like, timeline-wise, you like if I start to really, you know, be consistent on all of this, mm -hmm. um, 
do you think like maybe improvements in the next couple of weeks would be realistic or yeah is it just different for everybody it it's the, it will be different on like our consistency the human consistency but the more consistent you can remain with some of these things the faster we can get a him over these hurdles and at least have yeah. a dog in the crate that is starting to be able to relax as he's getting more used to it um the the whining may you know come and go throughout his life sometimes it's just honestly the dog's personality um and it's not clear enough to a dog i believe to correct them for whining Uh, but i'd like to like let's say like let's give this two weeks and then we'll stay in touch and if you're struggling we can adjust your tweak things and if we need to we can do another in-home with uh centered around a lot of crate stuff in terms of like his behavior that is related to the separation anxiety like say i take him somewhere and i hand him off to someone else and i like walk away and mm-hmm. leave him or something he goes crazy so yeah yeah i mean it doesn't go crazy but it'll like whine and yeah like, <laughs> um would that kind of thing like over time with consistency with all the rest of it do you think that would ever get any better is that just like another thing that's just kind of kind of going to be him all the the way I think it can definitely be better and whoever is handling him whether that's like your boyfriend or your parents I would just fill them in on one thing we're going to ask him to do so if you're running into a coffee shop and somebody has him out front I would have instruct that person to tell him to sit and hold him accountable for breaking the sit And by picking that one thing, he can stabilize into the environment. And he might still whine and be like, mommy, but it's not going to be this explosion of anxiety because we're starting to ask one thing of him and having him focus on that. Um, So I think that can definitely be improved as most of these issues will be. Um, The whining is the only thing that comes and goes throughout a dog's life if they are kind of predisposed to be a little bit of a whiny guy yeah okay sounds good thank you so much Bridget yeah I'm so happy that you reached out because like <laughs> I totally had it on my list of things to do I was like sure. oh, I'll reach out to you at some point and then you messaged me and I was like okay this is my sign <laughs> yeah 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 well we're always here to help you and I want to continue to support you with this because I know that's a really hard issue um yes especially if you're working as much as you're working and to come home and have a really anxious guy is probably not fun all right mister anything going on with him recently that we wanted to talk about just the vet the visit. vet stuff just okay words, I just, I know sorry so okay there. yeah is it just going to be like a getting to know him yeah. appointment yeah They've, we've done a lot of work with them, sent a lot of clients there, and they've been wonderful. So the last vet visit, you said, was a little bit of a mess. Yes, it was for his, it was the um, med vet, so it was for his ophthalmology appointment. She said she couldn't even, like, finish the exam, and he was kind of, like, trying oh, to, like, bite at the tools. Yeah. He smacked his muzzle oh. off, I guess, one smack there, but she was able to get it back on him. So were you not present when the exam? No, because I asked, like, multiple times, and they were like, the ophthalmology room is very small. And yeah. There's a lot of tools everywhere. Yeah, so then yeah. they had me dilate his eyes, so they gave me the drops, put me in the one room with them. And even that was, like, rough. Like, he was, like, yeah. hiding me to okay. buy him. Okay. Because um, he was so worked up. But then we did get the eye drops in. They were able to do a little more of an exam, but she said she was, it wasn't, like, a full exam sure. that she wanted. Okay. And then the end result was, like, her telling you that he needed to be seen by a specialist and get medicated. Yeah. Yeah. Is he currently on any medication? No, I okay. don't I mean, we have it at home. Yeah. yeah, I'm certainly not a vet, so I can't. My my personal advice is I think medication is just a band aid, and a lot of vets will over medicate a dog when it has the slightest amount of issue. If we're putting ourselves in Chewy's position, he's going somewhere he doesn't know. He's having people touch him, put things in his eyes. Of course, he's going to get a little freaked out. You know, like I I feel bad for him. Um, but addressing that moving forward, we just want to find a vet that's willing to work with him and able to make his vet visit it's not only positive but they don't try to do things without trying new options like giving you medication without trying to handle him in a different way or having you come in and assist um so i'm sure that was pretty upsetting (laughs) to hear and then um 
the behavioral clinic, I've had several clients that have told me about that and they said it was just a disaster, um, the whole experience, so. Like I saw her take him to the vet, and then like y'all send me the videos of him, and I'm like, yeah, I cannot get there yeah. at the vet with him. But like, sure. Obviously, it's possible because we see it. Yeah. What would be like our responsibility is getting him muzzled and bringing him, getting him comfortable on a muzzle, bringing him in. The vet's responsibility is to help assist with um, all his medical needs, obviously, and maybe having you. Some vets will allow you to restrain because it's a little bit easier, but. He should, I mean, he's never going to be absolutely perfect with handling with a stranger, but I think we can get really, really far with doing things like his nails, examinations, if we get him more used to us feeling him, touching him, and getting him to tolerate those things. Um, I consider some of those handling things like non-optional, like we have to do his nails, he has to get vaccines, he has to get his eye looked at, and he just needs to learn how to tolerate that in a safe way that we're still able to communicate with him, but not letting his antics get the best of him. So at the vet, does he generally, like, does it start in the lobby yes. where he is yes. freaking out? Yes. It's the lobby and then, like, I can get him in a down, but he'll break it. Mm -hmm. And then Come here. I feel like if I correct him for breaking his down, it'll make it, like, yeah. worse. I think last time when we were doing an exam with him, um, I just made it, I took him to the groom area. When you guys weren't present, he was a lot more calm with me because I think he does know me. It's just when you're present, he's got the added, he's trying to pull toward you, added excitement. So picking one thing that I'm asking him to do, whether that's sit or down, I'm just gonna hold him accountable. Okay. Obviously that last correction was a little bit high, so I'll turn it down, but getting him to kind of physically stabilize in the lobby, I think would be really good to start to implement when you take him new places. You could also practice this by going to a pet store or a Home Depot to get the public reaction. No. Down. Get his public, uh, some public access sessions a little bit more strong. So when he's in a place that he's not familiar with, he's still able to key in and focus on both of you. So here I'm just kind of not allowing him to leave my space. I'm not trying to hold constant tension, but I'm gonna get this muzzle on him. No. Correcting one very specific thing is just putting his paws on me. So if you, do you j j typically take him when he's muzzled? Yeah, or? I had him before we left this last time. And he did fine in the car ride, did fine Good. there, and he had smacked it off in the back. I think getting him used to, good, wearing his muzzle, maybe like a couple times a week, just when you're not going to the vet will be helpful too to get, so he's not associating this with like being, like go to the vet being physically restrained. You can do it if he is food motivated, do it with a lot of good. I'd use food here after I said good, get him used to it going over. And I know we could strap this on and he'd be fine, but giving him the opportunity to start to wear it in the house, good. I think would be super helpful to just, uh, him starting to desensitize to it, you know. I'm trying to pull your ear here, buddy. Good job. So the key points is when you go to the vet, he's a little bit nervous in the lobby, and then it starts to escalate from there. Yes. Okay. Hi, bud. Good. I picked just one thing, so initially I was telling him to down, I've since released him from that. But picking one thing in the lobby, I think will give you something to focus on, give you a criteria and start to set a little bit of expectation for him. So he knows I can't pace, lunge, bark, I just have to hang out in my down. I wouldn't worry too much about the corrections and how they're freaking him out more. Uh, just have that in your mind that just either sit or down. 
you're sitting her down and you're not pacing around, getting all hyped up. I'm gonna take the Dremel out here and only correct him if he puts paws on me. Do you remember this? <laughs> I turned it on low. Hey, buddy. Well, it may never be like his favorite thing to go to the vet, but some vets will do check-ins where you just go and have a positive experience. Uh, it's not like a formal exam. That might be helpful to him to just desensitize him to some of these things. Oh boy. I'm gonna just slowly grab his paw here. I'm just gonna hold until he relaxes. I think the more handling drills you're able to do with him will get him a little bit less nervous around these things. Good. Good job, buddy. And if he's an active struggle, like he were f trying to get his paw back and flailing, I'm just gonna hold on. I'm not gonna hurt him, but I'm gonna stay pretty still until he's done. I don't want him to realize anytime he pulls away or freaks out, he gets what he wants. Just holding it gently. And when he's done with the struggle, I can resume back to things like nails or the exam. Good. Good job. I like it when he's all grown out like this because he looks like, I say this with love, but he looks stubby. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and it's really cute. And obedience, like what we do like with the sit and down, is not meant to like change the, his state of mind because it's impossible for us to train how he feels. It will just help a lot with getting him more used to that so he can feel good, so he can start to feel confident. So by restricting his movement in the lobby, we're able to kind of send him the message like, hey, buddy, just calm down. I think going to PetSmart and just practicing like obedience, getting him to walk around the store, I'd start with just your heel, getting him to walk in a nice heel, and then maybe move on to your sits or down, and getting him to start to be able to key and focus on you in a more stressful environment. Because he can sit and down, but we don't want to get in the habit of repeating ourselves or having to use the e-collar as our last resort. No, that's okay for right now. Because mostly if it's just, as long as they're holding it, that's really the big concern right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they have to like express that anxiety or that excitement because they're just see someone coming in or whatever. Because the main purpose is holding that down stay okay. or that bed stay, you know. So as long as that's being held, that's fine. But we'll just give them a minute and kind of just let him calm down a little bit just because he's very stimulated. And this is like the whole purpose of it, right? If people come in, they're able to hold that duration and just kind of be consistent with it. Okay. So we'll give them a minute and then kind of go down. But how have things been going? Good. Yeah? Um, have you had a lot of situations like this with people coming in? No, only and... my sister. Okay, cool. okay with my sister. He's the one who got it. He's the one who will more test it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, how high do you usually working with these? I've been 
doing higher. I know. Okay. Class. Perfect. Yep. I think I, that's 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 right where I would want it. Still, I don't think it's like I don't think we're yet at that point where we can start kind of like reducing down. I think it's just being this consistency. I think is still really good. Okay. So, um, you know, you can see kind of. Arlo creeping off like that too. Like that is kind of riding that line right there. I wouldn't correct him yet because he's he's obviously like in a calmer state. His head's kind of down and stuff. But even just from when I walked in, like he was completely on that bed, and now he's like kind of started to creep off. So that would just be something where I like to kind of make that line drawn where you know if he gets more than like halfway off or if like his elbows come off okay. I would probably give a correction and fix him on okay. right so no, no 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 not right now okay. no but just if he like keeps crawling like I just don't want it to be a thing where it's like they start kind of pushing their luck where we start working out of sight duration and stuff and you go and put them on the bed and then you leave the room to go grab a glass of water or something and then you come back and like just their toe is touching like okay. hey I'm kind of doing it you know I'm still on the bed right it's like no clearly have like army crawled off and stuff so I'm going to kind of make that kind of known because that's again kind of them pushing their lock right trying to see what they can get away with mm -hmm. and so I think this is like again he looks excited but he's still maintaining majority of his body on that bed stay so okay. I'm okay with that how about have you guys done any walks or anything I've been just walking. up and down yeah how's that looking Doing good. Uh, Ace has needed a few corrections because he kind of goes too far up. Okay. And especially when Arlo, he likes to take a turn like by my leg, and then Ace doesn't gotcha. like that, so he kind of goes further up. So uh, okay. Cool. Um, how about like any dogs and stuff? I know like we saw the one dog, the one like no, when we were here. I took okay. him for a bath and he was good. Okay. And there was another dog getting bathed right next door. Perfect. Um, did he? Did he like seem to mind the dog at all, or was he kind of like looking at him in a little bit? Or yeah, yeah. perfect. That's good. Um, and then how's like feeding and going stuff? That's has that been good? To, um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I wanted to maybe feed him, and um, it's more of after when they get done. Mm -hmm. like one gets done sooner than the other. Mm -hmm. I get nervous. Yeah. That's that's More fair. so if Arlo finishes first and he comes over. Gotcha. That's when I Do they seem to still be responsive? Like if you are giving those corrections, does Arlo seem to kind of still like want to move away, or does he seem to still kind of want to no, go see what he's doing? He's listening. He's responsive. Okay, he's, so that's Arlo's so that's more good. Than yeah, and I could kind of see that being kind of the situation and everything for sure. In the terms of like still feeding them in the garage and everything, I know we kind of fed them up by like the counter and stuff where I think it was Ace over in the corner or something where yeah, if, if they finished, he would have had to kind of walk past yeah. Arlo to do it. So that could just be something where you have Ace where he was and Arlo kind of more by like the garage door. And so that way they have to kind of come towards you and you can just kind of stand by the door. So that way there's that kind of that fork or whatever. And so you can kind of still be in the middle. I know David kind of said having that situation where you guys are kind of in the middle of it um, so that if one tries to cross, at least you can kind of like put a foot out or something, you know. So that could just be something if you wanted to try doing that, just creating more distance, you know, you could you could try that as well. Sometimes I'll put them on there. There's two cots out there. Sometimes I'll put them on that while I'm preparing it. Sometimes yeah. I'll just prepare it and just leave them where they're at and yep. do it. That, and that works too. I like... I like them to be able to see it, and so like if they're on the cots or whatever, or at least in the garage where they can see you preparing it and everything, because that's a big part of it too, is getting kind of wound up. They know it's feeding time, and so they start kind of like bumping into each other and everything. Yeah. So having them separated is, I think, a good decision as well. Um, like David was showing, you know, even just putting the bowl down like empty, and then you go fill it up, or just having the food in there and putting it down, mm -hmm. even that they're not allowed to come up. So in that way too, it's simulating like until I say go, even though if you know it's feeding time or dinner time, whatever it may be, like you're still gonna be you're still gonna be waiting, right? If finishing the if finishing the the food is what makes you nervous or after they finish, I mean it's after. then it's yeah, then just maybe just create that keep that distance further away and then if it's something oh you're fine. If it's something where even you can put a cot behind them or something and when they're done start just putting them on that bed stay until the other one's done. Or, or like I said, if, if they are, if Ace is over where he was and Arlo's kind of by the garage door or something, Arlo finishes first, 
you kind of just step out of the way, Arlo goes back in the house, and you just wait there for Ace to finish, and then Ace comes back in the house, whatever, you know. It's always Arlo, he wants to come back, like, Ace, I'll open a garage afterwards, and they'll go out. Uh-huh. Ace just wants to go out afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. and go look around the yard. Arlo wants to do circles in the garage looking for any scraps. Mm. And I can see Ace looking like, is he going to find something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And so, and so that would be, that could be something where, you know, just maintaining that separation, right? Um, it could be something where you could, when they're done, you grab the bowl, because they don't have a problem with you grabbing it, so you could just grab the bowl, put it in the sink, and then just release them outside, you know? Um, and if, and if Arlo doesn't, if he starts circling around, if he doesn't go outside, you know, you could kind of just like coax him out. I wouldn't necessarily like correct him for sniffing around because he's not really doing anything wrong. But if it's like, if it seems like it's making you guys nervous, then it's something where you could kind of just like walk out with them and just, you know, coax him out and just bring him outside to go to the bathroom as well. And if it doesn't seem like, you know, Ace, like you were saying, when he finishes, he wants to go out to go to the bathroom or something. If Arlo doesn't seem like he has to go to the bathroom, all right, fine, go back inside. Right? And then you can let Ace do his thing. He wants to, yeah, he wants to do circles and look yeah. and see if Ace dropped anything. Mm -hmm. And so that would be something, yeah, that would be something where if it makes you nervous, take control of that and just be like, nope, you're, we're not doing that. You know, like you're not making me nervous. You're either coming inside or you're going outside. And like those are your two options, right? Um, so let's, how, how have they been with like the kids and stuff too? Good. Yeah. Um, why don't you go ahead and release them? The bed stays obviously look good. Um, have you done a lot of down stays, or do you usually mo just do, do the? Yeah. We do down. Like I'll do down when I take them out of the cage. That's mm -hmm. something that's a little crazy sometimes is when the collars aren't on. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to put them on. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of like Arlo's trying to get away. Ace's jumping, not jumping up and down, but he's not just hectic. When I'm trying to get the collars back on. Do you usually bring both of them out first and then get the collars on, or is it usually one at a time, at a time. Put the, and then put the collar on? And then yeah. I'll just stop them right there and try and say down right there. Out of the I base. see. Actually, today Ace did better with it. When I said down, he did down it, put the collar on. Okay. Oh, I see. Like you, you bring one out at a time. Like you bring Ace out, put the collar on, yeah. have him sit, and then bring Arlo out. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Um, I would probably, I would, I would probably say like doing that down state outside or just like letting him go outside because if you already have the remote if he's being amped up or whatever if he's running out and you see it like the kids like coming through and you see him kind of like heading for him like mm -hmm. he's just excited or whatever you can just give that correction no he doesn't have a collar on yet so what i'm saying is like when i let them out is when they're like arlo's trying to push away he's talking, when i'm trying like to put the collar on in the morning when the collars are have been chosen gotcha he's just going to crack the gate to put them on so, oh, so that, yes, I see. To, you're putting them in a down to put the collar on. Yeah. I got Carlo you. Doesn't really listen they know the collar is not on. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yes. Um, so that is, yeah, that is something where that, that, that is kind of like that gray area. It can be like a little touchy. Um, now, you know, we like to try to, especially with, this being kind of the first weeks or so into having them home and getting into the consistency, we like to try to either give the, or only give the command when we can be reinforcing it. Okay. So because it's something where they do know that the collar isn't on, and so they, again, will kind of be pushy with it. Whereas if we're only asking them to do things when the collar's on, then we can be consistent with it, right? And so, in terms of doing that, getting them in more of like a calm situation before you can get the collars on, it's something where I would, you know, you could either try to have them just sit or something where it's more of an indirect command of not using this as much, or it can be something where, you know, we're, we're trying to let them maybe get that couple seconds of like coming out and being excited, oh my God, we're out of here or whatever, and then just waiting for them to kind of like check you out and then trying to put it on. I mean, obviously, you have two pretty strong dogs, so I understand, especially in the morning, you're like, get the heck out and go to the bathroom, right? So, but it's, it's just in the sense of like, having them be a little bit more pushy with it. If you see that being more of a common thing, then like maybe every once in a while, it takes a Arlo two commands to do it, right? If that's the case, 
then you're, you're probably fine with doing that still. But if you see it being more of a continuous problem where they are just constantly blowing you off in the morning and stuff, I would like to try to like have it be on. Or if it's something. And then practice putting on another collar. Yeah. Or if it's yeah. Or if it's something where you know if you wanted to have the collar on one night, like leave it on overnight and then like have them come out in the morning. That way it's on and you can just ask them to down and give them that, that correction okay. to reinforce it. You know that that could be something as well. Um, having it overnight one night isn't going to be like there's not going to be like hot spots or anything over there. Um, but it can break that system of like oh, I, I have to listen. Like, I've been able to get away with it for a week now, mm -hmm. but mom didn't take it off. So when I wake up in the morning and she asked me to down, I better do it, right? Okay. Because we can f enforce it. So we'll just have them walk. Again, I'm fine with them kind of like fighting in for that inside or so. Just having a, you know, an idea of where that bubble is. So is this kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. With like him kind of bubbling? Yeah. So. With that, yeah, with that tension, I would, you know, if he's making that tension consistent, I would probably give a correction for that. Because it would be one thing if he's like, if he really wants to fight for the inside, he can kind of hang behind. I don't want him to think he has to go in front. I so he's kind of like right in that line I would probably give a crash because see how it is like it kind of it goes taut and then it goes loose a little bit no. right perfect and then just repeat that come command too perfect I want him catching on to the consistency and this is where with the with the recall with the stability within the bubble right there, it's kind of 360 so it does vary a little bit in front that's why i do give a little bit of freedom going towards like like hanging up a little bit in front but i usually cross the line so that i can be consistent with if his butt is in front of your lead toe give that correction That way you both can be consistent with like, okay, that's where the line is drawn and he knows that's where the line is drawn. Because if you guys are holding the, the lead at a different length and stuff, then him having tension on it can be different. So he might be able to get a little bit more in front of you than you know, your husband. So it's like, if, we, if we're consistent on the lead toe, then we'll be a little bit more consistent with it. And go ahead and try to get a little bit more loose on those leads. Perfect. Because I want, if he is going to push ahead, I want him to clearly break that line so that he knows, oh, okay, I definitely went too far that time, right? Yeah. If we're too tight on the leads, then we're not really allowing them to make that mistake. So it gets a little bit harder for him to have a clear understanding of, oh, okay, so that's too far, okay. right? Because I want, I want the correction to be like a teaching tool. So that's why that no marker before the correction is so important because that's saying that's the mistake and then the correction is just reinforcing that so that he doesn't keep making that mistake, right? Okay. And then repeating that command is just teaching him immediately to listen to hear what to properly do, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot of times the reason they'll kind of fight or at least like how I kind of see it is they fight for that inside because being further away, you're going to get that you're riding that line. But if you're on the inside, then you're definitely not going to make that mistake. Yeah. So sometimes I think they like to kind of fight in because they're like, well, I don't want to be wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, they look, they look great. I mean, even coming in and having them on that bed stay. And the reason I don't really correct for the vocalizing when they first come in is because it is just him kind of like expressing that excitement or stimulation and stuff. And sometimes, especially because we're on that high still, giving him that correction on high is more times than not gonna just make him pop off the bed. And then we're gonna have to give a correction again and put him back on. So sometimes it's better to just be like, as long as you're holding that position, you can kind of let that out a little bit, okay. right? And then we can kind of go from there. Perfect. 
Dice the valley on you. Down. Perfect. You can come back over and release. Okay. Nice. And this is also, with when we see a problem with the duration, I like to come back to them to release them because especially if we're doing this like more situational repetition where you're going away on purpose and kind of watching them, sometimes there can be that anticipation if you're releasing them from a distance as well where they're kind of like, they're like waiting for you to say it, and if they, you don't say it in time, then they're just gonna get up and assume that they can come over, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's, again, routine that you are always coming to them to release them, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, cool. I, I see them over there, but I know I have to wait for them to come over, right? I know I have to stay here and hold this duration until they come over to release me, right? Yeah. Um, so I would say just Every once in a while, right, I, I, obviously, I, I definitely want to see his elbows get a little bit better too. I don't mind if you're using the bed stays. Um, but just every once in a while, maybe just try to see if you're hanging, if everyone's in here or something, mm -hmm. see if maybe you can have them just hold, just a short duration like that too, right? Okay. More for the repetition of just getting down and holding it for a second or two. And then we can work up there, you know, if, if we need to. But if the bed stays what you're primarily going to use, then I have no problem with that, right? Okay. Because really, the issues are just really making sure that when guests comes over, they're fine. Mm -hmm. So with the beds. For long durations down there too. Yeah. Hours at a time. Yeah, and and that's what I mean. They they definitely seem more comfortable with that. And just based on when we came in, they were fine with it. I have no problem. If if that is solving the issues, then by all means, use use what works. You know. We're leaving on Friday mm -hmm. just for the day, mm -hmm. and my little sister was gonna. I know David said not to have the same perch and watch them. Yeah. So. My sister, is she okay to watch them both, or would you still say no? Like, could she just have one out of the cage at a time? Yeah, I would. Today? Yeah, one out of the cage at a time. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have both of them out necessarily, because they're they are doing great and they're doing great with you guys. But it's because you guys have been keeping them held to that standard, right? Mm -hmm. If you bring in someone that doesn't know and has had a problem, like they've had a problem in that situation before, mm -hmm. then it's something that it very well again could be like. Ace is like, oh, I, I am in charge here, you know? So, right, exactly. And take advantage, because he knows, oh, well, she doesn't know what to do, so I can definitely control the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something where it's just better to keep it safe and consistent and just. You don't think one will get more jealous than the other? No, I don't think so. And then um, one more question was sleeping at night. So we want to be mm -hmm. able to have them, like how they used to sleep is one would sleep on one side and the other one would sleep on the other side of the bed. Mm -hmm. Like not on the bed, but on the floor. Yeah, yeah. On their beds. Mm -hmm. I know David said not to do that for the first week and just keep them in their cages. So we have been doing that at nighttime. Yeah. Can we try and bring them out to overnight sleep in the bedroom? I personally would like to see just a little bit more consistency with it and just continue this really good path that we're on. Mm -hmm rather than have like one really solid week. Oh, and then, yeah, and then we, you know, we have this really solid week and we get too cocky and then something happens and then it sets us back huge, right? Okay. And if we can get like a long period of good like repetitions and everything behavior wise, then oh, I think we'll okay. be, I think then we'll be a little bit more comfortable with doing that, right? Okay. Bed stays, like I said, bed stays are great. If you wanna use the bed stays, use the bed stays. Um, just on the walks, order of corrections and stuff like that, like we were going over, being a little bit more loose on that leash and allowing Ace to make those mistakes, right? I want him to know, again, that, that clear line of what's right and wrong and, and not have him just guess. So I was saying, I was telling him, like on the walks, just super loose on those leash, just hold kind of like the handles with it and allow him to make the mistakes so that we can correct for it and teach him what to do properly, right? Um, and then every once in a while, throw in a down stay here and there just to keep it fresh in their minds. But I mean, other than that, they, they look like they've been, they've been doing well. Even him trying to kind of push his buttons a little bit with those downs and stuff, that was, that was impressive. Great, he likes you. I, I was Aww. What we got here? So tiny. 
so. Your ears are so big, though. Oh my gosh. I was hoping to grow into those. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on with this one? Well, um, nothing really. He's great. Um, I yes. He's very smart. Sure. I would like him trained properly. I want him ultimately to be a service dog, and I would like him to maybe be more of a medical service dog. Mm -hmm. What do you want him to do? What's that? What do you want him to do? Like what tasks? Um, just, I, I don't even really know. Like all the, the normal stuff. Just good commands, you know. No, I mean like from a service dog standpoint. Oh, oh. You said you want him to be a service dog. Is so there a particular my, task my that you're looking to have him do? He has strokes periodically. Okay. And we're not really sure why yet. Yeah. And it just kind of popped in my head um, that maybe that's a possibility. Sure. Something he could pick up on down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of I time. don't know much about the training. No, you're fine. It, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, as far as service, I mean, obviously that's a separate thing, but yeah. but to help kind of educate you a little bit on it, a lot of times with the medical alert dogs and stuff, like so say like seizure alert and things like that, it's interesting because there's not a, like, like diabetic alert and stuff is a little bit more precise, but like seizure alert and stuff, there's not a whole lot of actual training that necessarily goes into it because it's one of those things where what they've found is that like some of these dogs like either kind of have that like intuition in it mm -hmm. to like sense yeah. it and understand and then if you start noticing the dog like for example starts getting a little bit more antsy or pushy towards you or something like before something like that happens you just start reinforcing for it and everything obviously but that's a little bit a little bit of a tricky one definitely yeah, to get into training I for to start with a good foundation of course so i figured this is and he yeah ter toy fox terriers are pretty smart oh yeah and definitely and he is picking up on stuff like <laughs> very quickly how old is he he is just over About 20 four weeks. months, I think. Yeah, 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 pretty young still. Yeah, so he's a little guy. He's yeah. doing pretty well at the potty training. I've been pee pad training him because it's just too cold to even take him outside. Yeah, for sure. Um, he has he's been fine with that in the house. Him. What's that? He's been fine with that in the house. He has. I confine him pretty much to the kitchen when he's loose. Mm -hmm. um, my house has a lot of like separate rooms sure. and stuff. He doesn't need to be all over the place. And he's too quick. I can't find him when yeah. he gets loose. Yeah, I can sneak through anywhere. Yeah, and so he's been really <clears throat> good about going on the pad. He's not 100% yet, but sure. I would say he's like 90, 85, 90%. Okay. Um, he He's super friendly. Yeah. He's, he's just a good little guy. Yeah. Have you had him around other dogs? Um, no, I have not. He came from a breeder in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And he was around a lot of dogs. There was a lot, she had a lot there, but I have not had him around dogs since. Okay. So, and that wasn't intentional. It just never really happened. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I've only had him since uh, right yeah, before Christmas. Yeah, hasn't been Christmas. that long. Okay, cool. And he wasn't fully vaccinated yet either, so I couldn't really yeah. do much with him anyways. For sure. And I had COVID, so I got to stay home. The whole shebang. with him, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, we've got a ton of, you know, usually when we get dogs in that are this small, we kind of isolate them from the bigger dogs naturally. That was my, he could be yeah. a snack for that guy over yeah. there. Yeah. Like, no, we I, keep we keep them in small groups. So we uh, we do like like small dog social groups throughout the day and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like three of our employees have like all small dogs. So it works out pretty nicely. Okay. So we could make nice little play groups for them and stuff. He's yeah. falling asleep right there. He has been up all day. He's not napped Oh, yet, yeah. So... <laughs> He's, he's due for one. And he likes going in the car. So yeah, yeah. I'm in Avon Lake, so there's a good 25 minute yeah, drive. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and you said good with people and everything. Oh you haven't God, seen any yeah. issues he loves there? Everybody. I, he, I've never heard him growl or get weird. Obviously, sure. with toy play a little bit, he would do the puppy growl, but then I just would drop it and let it go, and yeah. he would go on his way. So mm -hmm. he's not. he's shown zero aggression. No good. hackles That's great. popping up, nothing, you know. Yeah. And you said no really big issues. It's really just again no, the foundation you're looking to get. I want him good foundation. Yeah, yeah. I want him, you know, the, a little bit of help with the potty training. I'm I'm not a dog trainer. Sure. So um, that kind of stuff. And I just want I kind of want you guys to have fun with him too. Like if you of see course. stuff that he's good at, yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it. I love that. I want him to do some agility training this summer because he yeah. loves, he, he'll leap, he cool. is a leaper, so yeah, yeah. watch that a little bit. He's got little legs. <laughs> yeah. And they could break probably pretty easy. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he just, he's a good little guy. This cool. Is, this is how he is pretty much all yeah, the time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me on anything? Um, I mean, is he gonna? Where does he sleep? Is he gonna be comfortable? I brought. Oh, bed. he'll be comfy. I, don't, I just yeah, don't yeah. know. Do you do you kennel him ever at home? Um, at night he sleeps in kennel. And he's good in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you keep bedding and stuff in it for him? Yeah, I have these little, little beds. He has been holding it through the night. Okay. So like, cool. I usually have been letting him out around like 
um, maybe 10 before bed, yep. and he usually poops before bed. Yep. That's something to watch for. And then he's good until the morning. Sometimes he'll want to get up around like 4 and go. Okay. I'm up early, so yep. for him that is okay. And then sometimes he goes back to sleep, and sometimes he doesn't. Understood. But he sleeps in a crate next to my bed in his bed. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he's used to being in one. Sure. So we'll probably start him the first couple nights in one of the kennels about that size right there, not the pink one, but the one to the, the left of yeah, it right he's there. he's been in, the one he's yeah. in is about the size of the tan one. Perfect. Yeah, we're going to start him in one of those, and assuming he doesn't have any accidents in it or anything like that, we'll probably upgrade him to a little bit bigger of one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll be able to keep, assuming he's good with the bedding in it and yeah. stuff, we'll keep the bed in there the for him. The time he's been peeing his bed is when I keep one in the kitchen and he's like overplaying and yeah. it's crazy and <laughs> sure. there's toys in there, he'll purposely do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was just a puppy thing. Yep. But I think that's about it. I guess my biggest questions were, will he be very comfortable and- Definitely comfortable. In the big dog situation. Yeah, separated from big dogs, definitely will be comfortable. And um, yeah, like we especially we get little guys in that don't have any big issues or anything like that. Like you were saying, we try to have fun with them, yeah. you know, teach them things, let them enjoy themselves and stuff, and just make sure we're setting a good foundation. Too, so. Oh, they most certainly can. Um, He's never been in a dog fight yet, so I don't know. <laughs> well, fingers crossed it stays that way, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Oh, my goodness. A little psycho guy. We'll, uh, we'll keep it through the loops. Are you following us on, yeah, you're following us on Instagram because you messaged us the other day. Um, so we try to post, you know, typically three, four times a week of the dogs. So you'll see him plenty. Um, Sandy here is going to be doing a lot of the training in addition to myself with him. So, um, We'll make sure he's having a good time. And if you have any questions or want to check in or anything, obviously oh, just reach out. So, sure. <laughs> sure thing. I love you. How'd you hear about us? Uh, my research online. Oh, yeah. Just reading reviews and. Very cool. You know, going through your Instagram. Yeah. And, and your podcast. And yeah, yeah. People speak very highly of you. So. Very good. Yeah. Well, we're happy to help you out. Yes. All right, bye. You don't care about me, I don't think. Now. All right, Sunny. This is, gonna, this is actually going to be a really good one, just per what we were talking about yesterday, because like we're not even messing with tools with this guy anytime soon. Okay. You know, yeah. like he has zero issues at home. She's literally just wants him to have a good foundation on him. So we're just going to have a lot of fun with him, a lot of food stuff. That's why I asked about the kibble, because we need to have something that's going to be able to be workable. You know. Um, so yeah. Um, I wouldn't even. Uh, I'll tell you, your walks and stuff you do shape your healing. Do it on the harness initially. Okay. Just so we don't do, I mean, his neck is so small yeah. at this point, you know? So. That's like the size of like New York rats. It had literally. <laughs> I want it. They said this one's his favorite. <laughs> okay. Luca. Come on. Good job, buddy. All right, get this over here. So this is Luca. He's been here for less than 24 hours. He just got dropped off yesterday. And he came here because he has a lot of kind of fear aggression. Come on, Luca, let's go downstairs. So we'll go downstairs and we'll talk a little bit more on what the first 24 hours of this board and train tends to kind of look like. So the first day or so, after getting dropped off, we really like to tend to get the dog very comfortable, as comfortable as possible with obviously their trainer um, and the kennel techs and the other dogs and just the facility in general. So with Luca, he came here with some anxiety and some you know, tendencies to be a little fear aggressive uh, with new people, new places, which is completely understandable and we see that quite a bit here. So. What our first day with him has kind of looked like when he first got dropped off, we got him custom or used to the crate, uh, which he had no crate training or very little crate training before. He's had some kind of negative experiences with it in the past. So getting him comfortable with that was our first kind of big hurdle. And we opened that crate and he was actually very good with it. Just a few times running him in, letting him come out, putting him back in and just doing that over and over again until he got comfortable into that routine. We were able to close that crate and then he was fine ever since. So that's our, usually our big first hurdle, especially if a dog has very little or no experience in the crate. And then in terms of reactivity in the crate, we tend to kind of gauge it upon the dog or the situation. 
obviously if we know that he's going to be stressed or around other dogs, you know, we, we tend to kind of give him that space, try to give him that space as much as possible. Um, and then incorporating him more into that free range around other dogs as he gets more confident and comfortable with the facility. In terms of first sessions, with, with me, usually the first session is a matter of just getting him into our training room, letting him kind of go around and sniff around the room, getting him aware of that situation, that place in general. And then I'll try to coax them over, get them a little bit more comfortable with me. I tend to not try to engage them too fast or too quickly because that can kind of set them off. And if they're being scared and fear already, obviously that's a, a negative association right away. So I tend to let them warm up a little bit and then move them into it. You can see that he has a chain leash on right now. We will put a chain leash on a dog that has either had um, situations before with aggression or just seems really anxious. Again, so we are not putting our kennel techs into a dangerous situation as well as not making him any more uncomfortable than he already is. So in the crate, we have the chain leash so that it's a little bit easier for our kennel techs to grab him for the runs and we're not invading his space any more than we have to, right? So getting him in and out, we tend to try to let them kind of do what they want and then in the sessions, the first couple sessions, we let them kind of go at their pace as well, moving them around the room, getting them onto the bed, if we can get them in a down, having them sit, you know, starting to lay that groundwork down so that when we do start to implement more of the commands into it, they already have that base level knowledge of what they can kind of expect going into the commands so that when we layer it in, you know, they're not getting corrected necessarily as much as possible, right? So Luca has already come a long way. He's gotten a lot more comfortable with me. You know, I've obviously been giving him a lot of treats lately. So, um, you know, just a matter of getting him more comfortable with me, allowing him to snack if he pleases, um, as well as, you know, sniff around, giving him a little bit more freedom, right? I don't really ask him to do a whole lot in the first couple of days. If anything, it'll just be about leash pressure and guiding him kind of where I generally would like him to be, right? Luca, good boy. <laughs> In a new place, they obviously tend to be a little less uh, driven to have an appetite. So just allowing him to have the opportunity to have these couple pieces and everything. If he doesn't care for it, obviously I'm not gonna be forcing him to have any of it. Um, and then around these new distractions, getting him kind of aware of his surroundings is always something that we try to do. So that moving forward, he's able to be aware of that. Now even, one thing that on drop off with him specifically, a little reactive around other dogs. So having him again in this lobby. No rules, no restrictions or anything um, besides the leash, but allowing these dogs to even be barking and, and outside and running around and stuff, he's able to kind of, at a safe distance, be aware of that situation, right? So, Luca. So again, just allowing him to understand that there is no reason to be reactive. There is no fear. I have his best interest in mind, and that will be kind of the main goal and drive into his board and train, going through all the commands. So that's generally the, good, the gist of the first day here at Miracle Canine. And uh, this is Luca, so I'm sure you'll see some more videos and updates of him later in the future.